So a couple problems for you to work on. For number two here, I'm giving you that angle A is an obtuse angle. So you need to figure out how that affects things for you. Let's see how the battle's going here. So for our first one, again, I'm just going to draw my generic little triangle here. C is 39 degrees. A is 72 degrees. B, side B, is 22 inches. Do I have a side and an opposite angle? Not yet, but I can. Angle B here is 69 degrees. 180 minus the other two angles. Now I have a side and opposite angle. 22 over the sine of 69 is correct. Equals, let's go with ang or side A first. So A over sine of 72. Do we expect A to be bigger or smaller than 22? Slightly bigger. Twenty-two point four one. Which makes sense. Now we're still going to have the twenty-two over the sine of sixty-four equals c over sine of thirty-nine. Perfect. Or sorry, 69, thank you. That's where sign of 64. Yeah, little hamster's taking off early today. <laughs> so 22 times the sign of 39 divided by the sign of 69. Now we're expecting that to be smaller, and 14.83 is in the ballpark. So 14.83 inches is that. And then of course we already found angle B to be 69. Any idea what it was? Okay. Hmm. Okay. For this one, I can't use my same generic triangle because I'm told that A is obtuse. So I'm going to draw it with A obtuse. I'll put in B is 28 degrees. Side little B is 23 inches. Side little A is 31 inches. Note I had to tell you that A was obtuse because there's two possible triangles that could be formed here. This could be out here like that too and A could be acute. How are those two angles, the acute version of A and the obtuse version of A related? Supplements, very good. They add up to 180 degrees. So now I do have a, a side and its opposite angle. Which pair goes together? The, perfect, 23 over the sine of 28 degrees. The only other information I have is 31 inches, where it goes on top over Sine of A. So now we're going to cross multiply and divide. We will find the sine of A, so sine of 28 times 31 divided by 23, 3.6328, so that A is the inverse sine of 0.6328. So we will. Leave it in the calculator, go second sign, second answer. 39.25 degrees. Now I'm gonna do this A with a little bar over it. What that little bar means is that it's a supplement or a complement of another angle, it can mean either one. So A itself is 140.75 degrees. Where'd that come from? 180 minus that 39.25. So now what's angle C?
Where'd 11.25 come from? Yeah, exactly. 180 minus those other two. And we will find side C yet. We still have 23 over the sine of 28 degrees. C over the sine of 23 times 11.25 Bose divided by sine of 28 9.56 degrees 9.56 inches wow any questions It's okay, apparently I don't know the difference between the angle and the sign of the now, so I've done that twice so far today already. It's moving all day. Okay, so. I kind of am. So anyway, back to our lovely generic. If we are given that this angle here is 28 degrees, this side is 27 inches, and this side is 24 inches, do I have a side in opposite angle? No. Can I find one? Well, not with a lot of signs I can. But yes, we can find one. But not with what we know so far. Law of signs requires. Yeah, we're getting there. We're not quite there yet. Yeah. Law of signs requires that we have a side and its opposite angle. We don't have that here. We have two sides and what's called the included angle. And when we have that, we are going to switch over to something called the law of cosines. And the law of cosines is actually from the Pythagorean theorem. It's part of the Pythagorean theorem. It was kind of developed along, not along with it, it came later but it was continued study of the Pythagorean theorem found that a squared plus b squared equals c squared applies to triangles other than right triangles as long as you have a correction factor. So writing it a little bit different than what we're used to, that's what we're used to seeing for the Pythagorean theorem. Is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. That only works if c is a 90 degree angle. If C is a 90 degree angle, what's its cosine? What's the cosine of 90 degrees? You can punch it in if you want to. Zero, right? Cosine of 90 degrees is zero. So this actually will come out to be the Pythagorean theorem when C is 90 degrees. Our correction factor is we're gonna subtract two <coughs> times the length of side A times the length of side B times the cosine of angle C. Note what we just said though, that if, if C is 90 degrees, cosine of C is zero. So if C is 90 degrees, this whole thing here is being multiplied by zero, it would be zero, right? So this is just the thing in zero, if that angle is 90 degrees. But in this case, it's not 90 degrees. So C is going to be, side A is 27, so that'd be 27 squared. Side B is 24 squared minus, perfect, 2 times 27 times 24 times, times it goes down to 50 degrees. Now this is going to give us C squared. We'll have to square it, yes, unsquare it. 
That is one way to put it. Wait, it's 618.22. We got to square root that, so second. Square root, second. All right, 24.86. And that is in Eames theory. Whatever my other units were. Now I've got the, the side opposite the angle that I have. Yes. I have an angle in this opposite side or side in this opposite angle, whichever way you want to look at it. Now, remember, there is always a chance of one of the angles in a triangle being a loose. And the math of the law of signs doesn't tell us whether it's a loose or acute. So when we go to do this, we always want to find the smaller one first. That's the second step. We've applied the law of cosines. We will, should never need to apply the law of cosines more than once to the same problem. I won't say I, I once made the comment we shouldn't have to apply it more than once to the same problem. Well, in a couple of weeks, we're going to be able to apply it to the same But not to the same time. So we're going to set this up. It is 24.86. Yes, over the side. Of 58. Which side do we want to use first? The 24 and the 27? Always, if you can, use the smaller one first. Because we know that one has to be acute. Only, only one angle can be obtuse in a triangle. It has to be the biggest one. So that's going to be over the sign of angle B up there. 24 is across 15. So we cross multiply and divide here. Sine of 58 times 24 divided by the 24.86. Sine of 58 times 24 divided by that previous answer. 0.8186. So B is equal to the inverse sine of that. 54.95 sounds about right. Let me just punch her in from my own. <laughs> Apparently, I shouldn't trust me. There we go. 54.94 is correct. So now we add those up, we've got 112.94, which means this is 64.03. So we know that has to be an acute angle because they add up. If we had found the, the angle A first, we could never truly be sure if it was supposed to be acute or obtuse. The picture makes it look pretty clearly acute, but I just sketched out this picture too, so who knows, right? I'm going to have you guys try one. Now you'll notice, by the way, that I am being careful to make sure that the angle I give you is angle C. It won't always be that way. You'll have to adjust it. I mean, you know that it's the two sides and the angle are what go on the right side. We'll look at that in a little bit. I'm going to keep it easy for you on this example. So let's give you that's 52 degrees. Let's do side B down here is 40 inches and side A is 29 inches. I'll give you guys a couple minutes. So side C squared. Now I'm actually going to shorten this up just a little bit for us. Instead of C squared, I'm going to square it the other side. So A is 29, so 29 squared, plus B is 40, so 40 squared, minus 2 times 29 times 40, 
times the cosine of 32 degrees. The second square root, 29 squared plus 44. 2 times 29 plus 44 plus cosine 32. 31.82 is C. So then, of course, it's that over the 52 gives us which angle we're going to look for first. A, very, very good. That's our smaller side. What's A come out to be? 45.9 degrees. Which means B has to be 82.1 degrees. You guys concur? Okay. Remember how I always make it worse? He tried. <laughs> Tell your shrink I want my shrink back right away. <laughs> I've got to deal with it. I can't do anything with it. It gives me a little trouble. <laughs> I did have a student a few years ago that asked me, I've been having nightmares the last few nights about numbers and symbols playing on your own favorite. <laughs> Oh, anyway, as I start to chuckle, you believe me. Here, we don't know any angles. Remember we said the only case that we can't solve is if we only know all three angles? Well, here we have all three sides and no angles. But with our law of cosines, we can do it. C, I'm, I'm just going to leave them as they're labeled. Side C is the 34, so it's going to be 34 squared. Side A is the 27, so that's 27 squared. B is the 40, so that's 40 squared. Minus 2 times 27 times 40 times the cosine of angle C. Now, I'm going to treat this as though it's a variable, like it's a x or whatever. So I'm going to combine everything else that I can here. Now, I have to be careful. I can combine this, but I can't include this in it. Why not? Yeah, this stuff is multiplying the, the cosine, isn't it? So I, it has to multiply the cosine before I can combine it with that. But I can combine those because they're just added out here. So I've got 27 squared plus 40 squared. That gives me 2,329. Now I can combine... I can multiply those together and get them to want a single number. So 2 times 27 times 40 is 2,160. But that is multiplying the cosine C. It's because it's multiplying the cosine C that I couldn't combine it with that 2329. Now this is just an equation. Remember, I'm treating this like it's the big X. So I'm going to subtract 2329. Oh, I forgot to do the 34 squared, didn't I? 34 squared should be 1190, 56, there you go. So I subtract now that 2324, 2329, I should say. And that gives me a negative what? Eleven seventy-three. That equals. Notice this is also a negative twenty-one sixty times my cosine c. Now to get the cosine by itself, I need to. That's multiplying, right? 
bit, so I get rid of it by divide by negative 2160. So, negative 1173 divided by a negative 2160 would be positive 0. 0.5431. That equals the cosine C. Guess what we're going to do next? Inverse cosine. Sounds about right. 57.11. That is angle C, 57.11 degrees. And of course, from there, now you have sides and opposite angles, right? I'm not going to charge you with this today. I'm going to give you some homework. On Monday, we're going to come back from our weekend. We are going to have a quiz. And we're going to review some more. That does wrap up Unit 3. Yeah. Actually, no, this is Unit 4. Never mind. It wraps up Unit 4. So there will be a test probably Tuesday. But anyway, out of that last class that I gave you, page 382 through 385. 18 through 42, if you just wanted to do the odds, it would be wonderful. If you're really struggling and need to do the evens for extra practice, go for it. <laughs> 